Making a game is not a piece of cake. According to Google, it can take up to five years. I don't have that much time or patience. I only have one hour to build a game using Pygame. And to make things even more challenging, I can only use Google for five times. But what can I make in just one hour? Hmm. I'm thinking about a very simple game where you will shoot down an image. As you can see, it's a very unique idea. Never done before. Uh -huh. Anyways, let's start. First, I will download the sprites that I will use in my game, like a fighter jet image. I think so this looks good. Now I need another jet that will work as an enemy jet. Ooh, that looks cool. Now I need a background over which the two jets will collide. Yeah, this will work. Now I just need a bullet image and an explosion image. Oh, I also need to remove the background from this images. Then I will organize all the files into the folder. Also, I almost forgot about the sound effects. Like I need... No, what? Yeah, it will work. Then... It took me a while. Anyways, first I'm setting up a basic Pygame window, which means opening a screen with nothing on it. Let's see how does it work. Uh, it doesn't work. Okay. Then I created a function that will load, scale, rotate any image and then display it on the screen. So the first image that I displayed was the background image. And after a few minutes of work, I had a vertically scrolling background. But how does it work? Let's say this is your defined screen and the top left corner as your origin point. Moving horizontally towards right is x-axis and moving vertically downwards is y-axis. So I will place my image onto the origin and by incrementing towards y coordinate, the image will move downwards on the screen. And at the end of this image, I will add the same image again. If this image crosses the screen, I will again place it on the origin and this cycle will infinitely repeat giving you a scrolling background but it's moving too fast. After that I displayed the fighter jet image. Now the next step is to maneuver the jet. Since I want to play this game on my mobile, I need a way to control the jet using my fingertips but I don't know how to do it. So I did what every good programmer would do. Stealing! And after a while, I finally got it. So this is your screen. When you will put your finger on the screen, this event will be triggered. And the position can be gathered using this function. Then let's say you move your finger towards right side. And you release your finger. Then this event will be triggered. And again, you can get the position using this function. Now as you have both press and release position, if you subtract the x coordinate of release from x coordinate of press, in dx and if dx is greater than 0 it means the swipe is at the right side and if dx is less than 0 that means the swipe is on the left side knowing this i added a functionality swipe left to move left swipe right to move right yeah it works then after few more lines of code the enemy jet is randomly placed on the screen. After that, I added a functionality. When the player taps on the screen, a bullet will be fired upward. Once it crosses the screen, the bullet will be reset to fire again. Then I did the same for the enemy jet. But the difference is, it can fire bullet on its own. And to do that, it waits for each bullet to cross the screen before firing the next one. Then I added movement to the enemy jet to make it move towards my jet. But there is a problem. Even if the bullet hits the enemy jet or my jet, it's not being destroyed. Now to fix this, I need to add a rectangle to all my objects. If any of the rectangles collides with each other, then it can be detected using the built-in collide rect function and accordingly the objects can be destroyed. But I forgot how to create a rectangle and add it to the objects. So I did what every good programmer should do.
Now if you try to shoot down the enemy jet, it will be destroyed. But there is no sound. To fix this, I created a function that will play sound by giving the file name. Now the last thing that I need to do is to implement a score counter to track how many enemy jets you have destroyed. Now the game is finally done. Let's see how it works. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's fine. 